morning Suzuki community, it's Myron at Zooks Off-Road. Today what we're going to be doing is showing you how to do a compression test the correct way on a Suzuki Samurai, Suzuki Sidekick. They're really all the same. They have the same firing order. The distributor on a Samurai, of course, goes clockwise. On a 16 valve, it goes counterclockwise. Keep that in mind. A lot of people get two and three mixed up. The firing order is always one, three, four, two on these pumper motors. What's a pumper motor, you ask? A Harley-Davidson is a pumper motor. All of the G motors for Suzuki, the four cylinders, they're pumpers. You have two top dead centers, one and four, going like this, and two and three go opposite. So when one and four are up, two and three are down. One and four, one is compression, one is exhausting. How do you know the difference between which one is firing? It's really simple which rockers are loose. It's always going to be the two loose rockers on one, the two loose rockers on four. One of them is going to be loose, the other one's going to be tight, and that's where you stab your distributor. So today what we're going to do is a compression test. All four spark plugs come out. You want this engine to go fast. If you run it a little bit before you do the compression test, you're going to get a little bit better number than if it was cold. Now with the uh, Suzuki, you simply crank the engine, wind the engine up, until the needle stops. So in this case right here, we've already done a compression test on this car, so we know that this motor needs to be rebuilt, but I'm going to be watching my gauge here. All right, we're going to crank until the needle stops. There you see it stopped at 155. Now, as you know, the book says that at 175, it's not, it is peak, but below that is not peak performance. And so here I see 155. I know this is engine's going to need to be rebuilt, but depending on how many miles the owner drives, this could go three more seasons. But the problem with running them down and running them down is you get to the point where the engine may not be rebuildable. Bad things happen when you get to really low compression. And so I'm going to write the number down on the firewall. That's my technique. Now if you were out buying a car and you had 155 pounds of compression, the, cust the, the seller could say, Oh, it drives really fast, 65 on the highway. Sure, great, wonderful. But that's not peak for that engine, and it will have to be rebuilt. And so that might help you when you're selling it. If you have great compression, it might help you when you're buying it, as far as the price goes. Now, I do like to mention to you that I never buy a Samurai that's for sale unless I do a compression test, and neither should you. You should always know what the compression of the engine is, because it's the most expensive thing to fix. Mm, close to the most expensive thing to fix. And so then we go out to cylinder two. We bleed off the needle. We're going to go ahead and crank it. And this time we got up to 160. So that's five pounds difference. And that's the limit. Well, the limit is 10. So when you uh, read the book, you'll see that you can be like 170, 170, 170, 160. That's allowable. But if you were at 15 pound difference, and that's your top to your bottom, uh, that's, that's a lot to be out. That's going to vibrate like crazy because that's 15 pounds uh, for a pressure that's a bit variable. So you don't, you don't want to be that far off. And we're going to go through here, we're going to do all four of these. And we're going to write them down. And this is what's called a dry test. We just want to find out what it's doing first. And we do that dry. This will be the last one I do for you so you get the idea. And this one here is only 135. And that's why we said that we know that this engine needs to be rebuilt. We're outside the variable of 10 PSI, and so that's why this engine's getting rebuilt. When you're running a factory carburetor because of the reverse Y intake, in fact, I put this on any carburetor um, except for the Harley-Davidson, the reverse Y causes fuel dropout, and that's why cylinder 2 and 3 on Samurai engines usually are the problem. 
or if it's a rich condition, usually it's one in four. And the reason why is because on the intake, and I've explained this before, on the intake you have direct flow to one and four, but it's got to do a reverse Y to get into two and three. And that does change the fuel mixture. Now the next thing that I would do is find out what is the problem with this engine. And I would do that by squirting some oil in each cylinder and then writing down the next test. If it jumps up really high, it's the rings. If it doesn't jump up, it's the valves. Now typically on a rebuild, my experience has been is I won't do heads anymore because these engines warp together. So when I am doing, uh, like I won't sell heads, I used to, but it just doesn't work out for me because the heads have all been machined flat, but they're both in, the customers are bolting them on the blocks that were warped. So when we have an engine done, we're decking the block and we are shaving the heads so that we have flat surfaces to begin with. Because these engines can warp into a frown, they can warp into a smile, so putting a flat head on a block doesn't seem to work that well for us. It may for other people, but we have a high failure rate of head gaskets doing just heads. So when I do a test, and I do a dry test and a wet test, and it tells me it's the head, I'm still going to rebuild the whole engine. That's what I'm going to do. So anyways, when you go out, all four spark plugs out. When you go out to do your compression test, all four spark plugs crank until the needle stops. Write it down and then go ahead and do your wet test. So that's how you do a compression test on a Suzuki Samurai, a Suzuki Sidekick, a Geo Tracker, they're all the same. And remember that fire order is 1342 and on the 16 valve it's swapped at the distributor. And so uh, that's it, thank you very much. Be safe, go wheeling, have fun, and uh, thank you for watching our videos, I appreciate it. Bye bye.